Hi, I'm Stuart Servitar of IBID Prep, and I'm here today to talk to you about the SHSAT math section. The math section is comprised of 50 multiple choice questions, into which are mixed all kinds of math questions. Three types in general, number knowledge and arithmetic, algebra, and geometry. What is number knowledge and arithmetic? That's knowing what an integer is. That's knowing how to add, subtract, multiply, and long divide, all without a calculator. They do give you scrap paper, and I suggest you use it. Don't be scared of long division. Don't be scared of fractions. You're not in fourth grade anymore. You can do it, and you better know fractions from here on out. Why? Because test makers know that everyone hates fractions. Plus, fractions are also good little machines for division. That's another story, we'll talk about it later. But get a grip on your basics. Then, make sure you know your algebra. Solving for x in every situation, including the dreaded word problems. How do we deal with word problems? And how do we deal with all problems in these tests, which are expressed by words? By reading properly. If you saw the verbal section discussion of this test, you realize that we try to get our students to read everything word for word and for the point. And you're going to do the same on your math questions. You're going to break down each clause and each sentence, figure out what you have, write something down, and then move on. You're not going to do what every other kid does, which is read the whole math problem and, and then say, wait, what did I just read? That's a colossal waste of time. And kids are always worried about wasting time on these tests. So don't do that. Everything else, following through, executing your problems to the end, that's a good use of time. Reading the whole problem and then sitting there trying to figure it out in one hunk, that's a waste of time. The other thing you want to do after you've read a problem, after you've executed a problem, is reread the last part of the problem to make sure you're answering their question and not your question. I've seen it a thousand times. Kids, hurry, 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 finish, solve for x, see the value of x in the multiple choices, pick it, move on, and get it wrong. Why? Because the question was not asking, what is the value of x? The question was asking, what's the value of 2x? Or what's the value of y? Or what day is your birthday? So you have to make sure you're reading and answering their question, not yours, because they're not going to give you points for your answer. The last general type of question you'll face on this test is the geometry question. Now, What's the problem with geometry? The problem with geometry is most students in New York City learn geometry after the state tests. What does that mean? It means you don't learn geometry. Because after the state tests, you're burnt, your teachers are burnt, and your schedule looks like Swiss cheese, full of holes for half days, full days, principal days, field trips, scoring days. I don't know what. And I don't know why we're in school from May on, frankly. But that's another story. The point is, though, you're going to have to learn geometry. Not a lot. You're not going to have to learn geometry, uh, trigonometry or uh, side angle side or proofs, any of that. You're just going to have to learn some basic formulas. You're going to have to learn how to differentiate from area from perimeter and make sure you're answering for area when they ask for area and perimeter when they ask for perimeter. And you're going to have to also deal with volume and surface area. So the important thing is, uh, is to learn your formulas because they're not going to be on a list. There's no cheat sheet, so you're going to have to have them here. And you're going to have to be able to execute properly the geometry questions. And it's the same as with the algebra questions. As you go, you write down the formulas. If they mention a triangle, write down the area of a triangle equals base times height over 2 and know what that means. And then as you go, you can fill in the facts that they give you and then come up with an answer, and then reread the last part to make sure you're answering the right question. So that's basically the math. You have arithmetic and number knowledge, you have algebra, and you have geometry. Sprinkled in are fun little things like uh, uh, scientific notation, prime factoring, um, a little bit of funny functions. That's where they give you a made up symbol and tell you what that made up symbol means to do, and then you have to do it. That's pure panic material. So that's the math. Three types of questions sprinkled among 50 multiple choice problems. 
read carefully, execute, use your scrap paper, finish your problems, reread to make sure you're answering their question, and you have a good shot at doing well on the math section. But remember, you don't have to be perfect to be very, very good. You just have to answer as many questions as you can. So make sure you're not obsessing on any question. If you don't remember the volume of a pyramid is one third base times height, then you're not gonna be able to sit there and prove and de derive the volume of a pyramid. Move on to another question. The questions generally tend to get harder looking or harder in topic as they go toward the 50s, uh, up to 50, but they're not necessarily more difficult. So make sure you get a look at all the problems. If you don't know a formula, if you don't have the slightest idea how to tackle a problem, just pick a letter and move on. Remember, that's another thing. Fill in every question, take a shot. There's no penalty for getting something wrong, so don't leave any blanks. I don't wanna see any blanks. I do not wanna see any blanks on your answer sheets. I wanna see a lot of right answers, and I want you to do very, very well. Thank you. Thank you.